Hi guys, Jason here on the Outer Farm. I'm actually on the trial property today. What I want to talk about today, guys, is the timeless fence system. Because I'm the sole distributor and reseller here in Australia at present, I'm getting communications back from potential clients asking me how can they dabble in the timeless fence system without going into it in a big way. And, and I can understand that, guys, because it's a big outlay to do your whole property with the timeless fence system. Well, any system at that point, whether it be barbed wire, and you know to, for you to get peace of mind you'd want to dip your toes first before diving in head first and outlaying a lot of money exactly what i did because you know i hadn't heard of the time and spent system I've, I've i've read about it on the internet i've seen a few people that use this over in the states but i just want to dabble instead of the massive outlay so i'll go through my setup guys and i'll tell you once you go down this path and you do it and you see the way your grass recovers when you're going down the regenerative farming route or regenerative ranching route, you will just buy the complete system. Like I am at the moment, on the other farm, I've got a shipment coming over now from the States with a few other clients, and I'm doing my whole 74 acres in timeless because it has worked wonders here on the trial property. The recovery time of this pasture now is unbelievable because the timeless system allows me to move the girls around the paddock adaptive grazing when required as required whereas before continual grazing i had no control of the animals here i can put them in specific areas where i need them to be and that's because they've got a good electric fence system but before i go any further guys i just want to run through a few uh, well a regulation and a law in australia um, the electric fence general regulations for australia needless to say it's probably the same in most countries um, the regulation states that barbed wire or razor wire must never be electrified if you need to electrify around barbed wire ensure you use a sufficient standoff or offset they call it um, insulators to minimize the risk of animals or people becoming entangled and the current law in Australia states that is it illegal to electrify barbed wire itself. Now as for the regulations, it's still legal to use an offset or offset a plain wire away from the barbed wire as long as the barbed wire itself is not electrified. So you might, you might ask yourself or one of your questions might be at this point is Jason, I've got great external fences. My barbed wire I've just replaced. I've got split posts, exactly the same as I've got on the trial property. They're in great condition. This is not for me. Or how do I incorporate an electric fence system on the property when my external perimeter barbed wire fence is in good condition? I'll also cover that, guys, because I'm doing the exact same thing here. Right, guys, what I'll do first is I'll run through my setup on the property on the way I've got my system set up. And then I'll show you how to hook it up to barbed wire. So this is an end point or a termination point. First thing I done is I bought some six foot galvanized star pickets and I drove them in at an angle. And then I used just a ceramic insulator off that. And then I used a tensioner to tension the wire. So I'll, I'll grab the camera and I'll give you a closer look but the tension of the wire guys with the timeless the recommendation from times themselves says it doesn't need to be torqued up like a piano wire what you need to do is when you're installing the plain wire have a look down and just take the sag out of the line that way if you have any trees or limbs or fall over on the fence it's not going to snap your high tensile wire it'll just bend over with the post the post will bend with it and then you just remove the trees and it springs back up. If you have too much tension in them, guys, you're going to break your plane. You're going to break your high tensile wire. So I'll bring you over closer and I'll uh, show you the setup I've got for the end point. And then I'll show you the corner. And then I'll just run through the timeless post itself setup. I'll get a bit closer. As you can see, I just drove out at an angle. But there's not much tension on that wire, guys. But just make sure you drive it back on the angle so it doesn't pull you. Post out of the ground or over. So all I done was added some knots there, 
onto the ceramic insulator and the knot there straight onto your tensioner there. So that's what I use for the ends guys rather than using a corner. And that's what I did for the corner guys. So same again, I just drove that six foot galvanized star picket back on an angle. Tied me knot to the, star, to the star picket and then the knot to the ceramic insulator and then I'll just run that plain wire around the corner through the hole of the ceramic insulator and then back up through the other T-posts. I'll go on to talking post sizes. So they come in three gauges, one and a half inch this is the back measurement across the back of the T-post. One and three quarter inches. And the big one is two and an eighth of an inch. But if you're just running, you just want to dabble, which this video is about, and just run internal paddocks, you only really need to go an inch and a half gauge. This is an inch and three quarters. I've gone a little bit overkill here because I didn't order any four foot post or four and a half foot in the first shipment. So this is a inch and three quarter, five and a half foot post, which you generally use for a perimeter fence. So if you wanted to run a, an internal line like I have here and keep cost down low, you've got two choices. You can go the inch and a half, four foot, which will run your hot wire at around 29 inches. My hot wire here at the moment is sitting at 32 inches. So I would have to go the four and a half foot if I wanted to keep the, 30, the 32 inch height. If you wanted to run lower and you wanted to go the four foot, you'd be running your line at about 29 inches. So that is still gonna keep your cattle in. I've got a few spots here where it goes in dips and goes up the top of hills. This line wouldn't, would be two foot off the ground, 24 inches. And because it's a psychological barrier guys, once they touch it and get hit a few times, they won't go near it. So they're not stepping over it, but that's a personal choice that you've got to make. Whether you want to go 29 inches above the ground and go the four foot, or when you want to go the four and a half foot post and go the 32 inches above the ground. Um, and also when it comes to, I might as well touch on perimeter fences now guys, even though this video is predominantly about an affordable way of trialing and dabbling into the posts if you've got external good fences which are barbed wire but if you are ready to go external posts i think in australia what's going to work best for us guys is the five and a half footer and the six foot t posts and for a perimeter you really want to go an inch and three quarters it's up to you guys we can drop back to an inch and a half but i really think the inch and three quarters or the two and a half Sorry, a two and an eighth inch is good for a perimeter fences. I've got two and an eighth inches I'm putting across the front of the other farm because it's adjacent to a road, but inch and three quarters will do the same job, guys. I just want that bulky look. But coming back to the height, if you want to go the five and a half foot for your perimeter fences, that, just remember all these posts, the measurements I'm giving you are the length of the post you've got a minus 18 inches or a foot and a half off those measurements because that is the depth which you bury them into the ground or ran them into the ground as the sticker on the back says. So when I say five and a half foot or six foot, that's the full length. You must take the foot and a half off that depth because that's the depth which they need to be buried into the ground as per the sticker on each post. So the five and a half foot will get you roughly 1200 mil to your top wire. My four strand barbed wire fences here on the trial property are sitting around the 1200. But when I go to the other farm and I've done measurements out there, my top wire is sitting in about 1300, 1350, which means I'd have to go the six foot post to keep the same height across the property. So. That's another personal preference, guys. If you want it sitting around 1,200 top wire, you can go the five and a half footer. If you want to keep it at around 1,350 top wire, then you go to the six foot. But they do make a seven and an eight foot. So I can't see us using them in Australia. I'm not saying that don't get them. Like 
I can do a custom order. If you want seven foot, eight foot posts, let, let me know, I can order them in, but I, I, unless you've got giraffes or deer here in Australia, you're trying to keep in, I, the five and a half foot and six foot, I reckon would be uh, quite sufficient. But like I said, I, I'm open to any order. If you guys want to put in for seven foot or eight foot posts, I'm, I'm happy to put that order in for you guys as well. Okay guys, before I forget to mention it, I'm only running the 32 here at the moment. I'm only running cattle on my trial property. But when I go out to the other farm, I plan running sheep and chicken, even though chicken's got nothing to do with it. But when it comes to the sheep guys, I'll be running my bottom wire between 12 to 18 inches high. Once your sheep are trained to hot wire, you'll only need that one wire. So you'll have one at 32 or the 29, depending whether you go the four and a half foot or the four foot. But if you're running sheep, incorporating sheep in the system as well, guys, you can run the next wire or your bottom wire down either between that foot and 18 inch mark to keep your sheep in. There's also one other point I really want to stress about the discussion today, guys, is 90% or 80 to 90% of this discussion today, I'm only talking internal fencing. So that petition fence you've got between your perimeter to the internal fence, where you're gonna run your poly braid and run cells down through the system. I may have mentioned external fencing a few times, but I just want to make clear right now that, like I said, 80%, 90% of the discussion is based on a one wire for cattle or two wires if you've got a cattle or sheep petition or internal fencing. No way in the world would I recommend, or well not even recommend, no way should you run a single or two wire system for a perimeter fence because you'll end up, one or two may get out. No way is it strong enough to hold in your cattle for a perimeter fence. I haven't got any, I've had one or two cows come under these fencing here, mainly calves, but I have had training cattle that have just been into the new system, have gone under the single wire before. And you know, you just chase them back around and put them in because they haven't been psychologically trained, they haven't hit the wire enough. So. It does work once they're trained, but no way would you ever attempt to put these as a perimeter fence. Because whilst you're training, you don't want them out on the road, guys, because you're gonna be liable if one of your cattle gets hit by a car and damages that car or even kills someone. So you have to go either five and a half foot or above, or above for your perimeter fence with a minimum four wire to six wire. I can't stress that enough, guys. So this is how you do it guys. This plastic handle should come with, or 90% of the time I found, it comes with your reel, your, your electric reel that you wind your poly braid onto. And it's just a simple case guys of hooking that onto there. Obviously that's your insulator and that stops electrifying the barbed wire itself. So at the other end guys, you've got your reel. And your reel, the hook there must go on your hot wire. Of your t-post and that locks in against the timeless post in the other paddock here in the training paddock i've got star pickets because i never had the timeless system set up there so i've just utilized the timber posts and put star pickets against them and on multiple occasions when i've set up that hook itself is it relying on locking against the post as soon as it hits the metal post it's shorting out it's arcing I've come out, I've, I've set it off, it's been okay, but whether the cattle's bumped it or whether the wind's bumped it, I've come out overnight and I've had KV drop on the solar charger because it's been shorting out overnight, whether it be leaning against the hook, I've also had it leaning against the metal handle, or I've also had it, the poly braid reel itself has been, has moved down and it's been leaning against the steel post shorting out. That doesn't happen on a timeless post, guys, because that is your insulator. You can walk away, that can be locked in, sitting anywhere, and you don't have to worry about the shorting out. You know, the holes, you don't need the separate insulator. 
and there's two ways you can put them on guys you can either go through the high the hole like i've done or you can bring them out the front and twitch them around the front of the post so if, if you think you know 10 years from now you may be looking at replacing the wire or it may break down instead of having to thread it through every hole you can just untwitch it leave your post in the ground and just run your new wire so that's a personal preference guys but definitely this is great the amount of hours i've spent chasing shorts in the training paddock before i even heard about timers i hate i hate to count predominantly most of the time it was shorting out whether it be bird poo between the insulator and the metal post and that is creating the ground for the short or the arc to go through the bird poo into the metal wire and arc out or whether it's been a failing insulator with uv damage and breaking down over time and fall off had fallen off or whether it be at the end we used to use the tubing to run our wires through to terminate around a star picket and over time that used to wear and used to arc out against that post and it just takes a lot of time to work out where these shorts are none of that matters when it comes to the timeless post it will not short out on that post so you've got to factor that in guys how much time it takes to find out shorts when you're using the star pickets compared to the timeless because there's copious amounts of hours what is your time worth so that's the setup i've got on the trial property guys so i've gone like i like you see in the video i've gone the galvanized six footer for my end stops rather than go for the end braces the timeless and i've gone just a six footer rammed in on the corner as well rather than have to go the timeless corner because the biggest outlays on your timeless fence systems obviously because there's a lot more material involved are the end braces and the corners and also the h posts which are supporting posts you can put down every 100 foot or 200 foot but you don't need them if you've got straight runs but they are the expensive part of the timeless outlay system so but i can guarantee guys you just need to buy the four footer or the five foot t post so that's dabbling but i 100 percent guarantee once you get into the system like i have here on the trial property and your grass just goes ahead leaps and bounds because you've move the cattle through the property when required as required you've got full control of the movement where they are so they're distributing that fertilizer and urine in pacific areas which the worms can use take it down feed the microbes the recovery like i said two years this is within anywhere between 30 and 45 days recovery now guys like it is fast so once you go down this track, I know when your fences are ready to replace, you will go timeless the whole way. That is how good the product is, guys. Like I said, I wouldn't have put my hand up to become a reseller or distributor if I didn't believe in the product. It is amazing. What it's doing for me on the property, yeah, 100%. You know, you may look at the price of a, at the moment, a metal star picket. But you also got to incorporate on that, guys. If you're going a four strand, five strand, or even six strand barbed wire fence, you've got the insulators on top of the T post, which you have to factor in on the cost. So yes, the timeless post is a lot is dearer than the star picket, but it is the post, it is the insulator, and it is got has got the UV protection on it. The galvanized ones are good, they don't rust, but when you get the black ones, over 12 months, that starts to degrade and you start to get rusting. With the timeless, with the UV protection, it doesn't degrade, guys. They've got a 20 year lifetime warranty on those posts and they're expecting to go 50 years, guys. So I don't know if I've seen any 50 year old steel posts black ones not the galvanized that are still in good condition that haven't rusted off at that ground level 
Um, and as you can see, guys, what I've done, if you've got a driveway like I've got going through your center of your property, a perfect setup, guys. I've got this running each side of my driveway, but I keep both ends open, which allows me to bring the cattle through corral and move them around the property. There's no partition fences and any of this fencing at all. That way I can move them through, I can make bigger areas with my poly braid and reel if I just want to graze, if I need the grass needs to be grazed a lot lower in my 12 hour period. But if I, if the growth isn't high like in winter time and I don't want them to take as much, it allows me to move my poly braid apart further, give them a bigger area, which means they're grazing less. And that's good about the system guys you don't want to put petitions star pickets all the way and make separate cell blocks because then you've confined to that cell only you can't adjust your paddock sizes uh, or if you haven't got a driveway run down the center of your property you can still run the system the timeless posts along your barbed wire if you're only dabbling and just want to trial it just run it you know along your barbed wire whether it be 30 40 meters and 100 meters long you can move your cattle through there and just block the ends off when it's not in use. You can continually graze your rest of your paddock as long as you're given that area that you're trialling with the timeless time to recover and get up to full recovery height, which I mean is when the tip of that plant has grown back and isn't flat because it's been overgrazed. Within 12 months, 18 months, you will see the difference in that pasture because you're laying that carbon on the ground which holds the moisture in longer you're giving the micros something to eat and you're feeding the worms with all the manure you're putting in a localized area and believe you me it won't be long and you'll be ringing me up or emailing me and saying jason i want to extend my time the system that's how much i believe in this product uh but that's probably all i've uh, got to do today guys i think i've covered just about anything i hope this guys helps you out and answers all those questions that i get emails about um yeah, guys, and if you're, like I said, if, if you think the content is good, please subscribe, guys. This is a small YouTube channel, and subscribers help me grow the channel. So if, if you're a regular on the channel, guys, but you haven't subscribed yet, just take the time out, hit that subscribe button. It helps me out, helps me grow the channel, guys, and it helps me bring you informative information so you're not making the same errors I made when I first started out. But on that note, guys, have a great morning. Have a terrific afternoon and an awesome evening, guys, and I'll uh, catch you later.